Hey, look, it's actually recording. I just spent the last four minutes yelling very loudly at Camtasia Studio in very vulgar ways. It does not want to record this game very well, and it still doesn't. Low frame rate, low frame rate in the game, crappy video settings. 16-bit color mode, though I didn't actually notice a difference, because the game's not really super high color depth. Um, this is Gun Deadly Gne. Gun Deadly Gne. I, I don't know how to pronounce it really. I mean, Gun Dead is pretty obvious, and then after that it's just the scrawlings of a madman. Anyway, this is an awesome bullet hell game, it's out on Steam. I play with default lives all the way at max and auto bomb, so I'm a wussy. And this game, this comes with the uh, new arranged soundtrack. The original was more bit chip tuny. I'm used to the original soundtrack, so I'm gonna go ahead and play the arranged version. It's a little laggy, but it's you can deal. I tried to record using normal settings and. It was like four frames per second. It was completely unwatchable crap, and I was very upset because I did pretty well. I I haven't played this game in months, and suddenly, you know, I played it on an easy as a test, and I did just fine. And then I recorded on normal, and I beat it. You know, I'm still on the easy. You know, my lives. I have lots of lives, but. Uh, um, if I stop talking, it's because I'm thinking. This game makes me think on occasion. You'd be surprised how quickly you can get used to these sort of games. It's like, your brain just gets in this mode where you can track stuff really well. And you gotta... There's a... How do I... How do I shot laser? Okay, there we go. Actually, I wanted this. You... You just get in this state where you can actually track yourself. Um, if you're not familiar with what's going on, that little... There's a little yellow sphere on my character's chest there that's my hitbox any hits anywhere else don't hit hurt me in fact if they go through my character's ow see I just took a hit there anything that goes through my character's sprite doesn't hurt me and it actually generates friction if I get enough friction it erases all the bullets on the screen I'm not super elite ow so I don't usually go for getting too much friction but if you're really good, you can gather lots of friction and erase bullets at opportune moments. And this game has a very interesting dynamic difficulty setup. It's actually very nice for... Oh, how do I... Crap! Switch! Okay. This game also lets you switch around to the left. Like, you can switch left and right and shoot left and right. Um, which is weird for a horizontal side-scroller. But you can. I forget what button I was using to do that. Oh, right, magic. And you also have magic, which I keep forgetting to use. Cause I usually don't play as this character. I usually play this game co-op on PS3. And uh, I have to use the crappy character. Because my friends aren't as good as me, so they pick this character. This is the easiest character to play as. She's, she's so good that it makes bullet hell kind of balanced and fair which is, of course, brokenly powerful. Um, the other characters, one of them is okay, but sort of hard to use. And the other one is a complete massive unholy bitch to use. I hate how she controls, and she's really terrible. Um, if you've played this game, you know who I'm talking about, but that doesn't really matter right now. I won't get to the special character yet. Actually, maybe if I... I don't know if I unlocked her. Uh, here we meet the boss of this area. There's five, I believe, yeah, there's five s stages or whatever. And, uh, oh. Shoot. That was lucky. Aw. And all of the end stage bosses have multiple forms, of course. I mean, how could they not? And we're only at phase level 9. Phase level is your difficulty. The maximum... Uh, what is it? 26? Anyway, phase level 9 is not that hard, but it's not super easy either. The way the difficulty modes work in this is by locking your phase level into a certain level. Or to certain ranges. 
And in normal, I think your phase level is unlimited. Like, it can go up to the maximum, but it starts out fairly low. And every time you take a hit, your phase level goes down. At the center of the plan of Operation Demonic Dawn lays a portal. I forgot to read the first bit of the story. It doesn't matter. The story doesn't make any goddamn sense. I've played the, the this entire trilogy. I still have absolutely no idea what's going on. But I'll still read it for you. I know you guys like bedtime story. This portal shifts between dimensions into a horrific underworld known as Quaifloth, home to demonic army laying in wait for its chance to destroy mankind. It is said that the source of their power flows from the Spring of Yord, where the Philosopher's Stones had been discovered. As such, it was reasoned that destroying the Spring would stop the Clay Floth army. This was the best- Hey, I was reading that! I hate when frickin' games do that. I mean, come on. It's like, I paused to read for like five minutes. Why would you suddenly decide, okay, You've gone one second over this time limit. We're just going to take the text away from you. We're being a jerk bag. Am I even hitting her? The key is to look near your character, but not at your hitbox. Don't look at your hitbox. Look near it. And you can sort of track where you are without moving your eyes. It's important for the twitchy movements. Oh, and this game also has a twitch movement mode where you move slower. That is an advantage in this kind of game. Sometime. Oh god. Don't stand over bosses. Bosses hurt your family. It's not cool. I think I just bumped the mic. Take that mic. Also, if you can't see some of the bosses, that's because of my freaking giant laser gun. So, uh, sorry. Actually, this is the one boss I kind of need the giant laser gun to sort of censor. Um, the, I've previously played the PlayStation Network PS3 version of this game, which is awesome and I recommend to every PS3 owner out there. Um, but, uh, the PS3 one is apparently censored in a couple of situations. Um, one of the characters is actually topless, so you're going to see some, well, I don't know, maybe I'll censor it out if I'm not incredibly lazy. But there's some, like... 16-bit nipple. It's it's pretty exciting, guys. Um, but it was way too hot for TV on the PlayStation Network, so they censored it out. I'm kind of... I don't really know why they left it in, like, in the original. It's like one character. Um, but, anyway. This video is going to be flagged. Actually, I'm probably going to end this video after this area. Um because my, the video is going to shit its pants in every possible manner. This does not... This, there's too much motion and this does not record well. Bullet hells tend not to. So all of the motion on the screen. Video compression mostly works by, um, you know, assuming stuff doesn't move, so you kind of break the compression's brain if stuff is actually moving a lot. It just does not work well. Like, there's some compression formats that are well suited to high range motion but it's still not great crap I was gonna take a hit there still not doing too bad I need to use my magic more I always yell at my co-op my heart nurse for not using magic now we fight the oh god oh god oh. the horde of bunny girls that aren't wearing pants they left those in the uh, PlayStation Network version it's not really... you can't see anything inappropriate, but, uh... I just always thought it was weird that these are bunny girls not wearing any pants on motorcycles. With incredibly high, like, handlebar things. And there's, like, a little bunny on top of the handlebars. It's a nice touch. The creator likes bunnies. I'm not sure why. Well, because they're adorable, I assume, but still. He also really likes pumpkins. Like inappropriately likes pumpkins. All of his games have pumpkins as enemies. I'm not really sure why. And there are always bullet hell pumpkins, too. We're over the iron Einfield region now, waiting for the right moment. The phase formula has begun to reveal itself. This door to space-time Route 1358. Ah, oh, yes, as opposed to Route 1457. Wouldn't want to make that mistake again. Ha-hoo, <laughs> boy! For humanity, it was once again 
It had once been a door of hope and scientific wonder. Now it is no, nothing more than a path directly to hell. There are thousands of layers in the Kuei Floth wormhole. But our destination was the Spring of Yord. Well, we will rendezvous with the rest of the unit. Haha, <laughs> there won't be a rest of the unit. There is no help. This is the fastest way there, but it won't be easy. This is the most dangerous route of all, so of course we take it, because we're stupid. Supposedly only one person has ever gone back through there and came back alive. Oh, right, crap. This is level not fun. But only at phase level 5? Such a nub. And these things are annoying because, okay, if you're using magic, like if you're slowing time, um, you can kill these guys and erase their bullets. It's actually called phase shift, the time slowiness. But if you're not in phase shift when you kill these guys, their bullets don't get erased and it's almost impossible to dodge them. Which is by design, but still kind of annoying. So I can't manually bomb yet, and I'm just gonna be taking a hit soon. Ugh. I didn't expect my phase level to get this low. Four is really, really bad. I should be around nine. I can handle about 9 or 10, but every hit drops you down, and I'm almost dead. It's way worse than I was doing my first run, actually. Which Camtasia destroyed, because it's a stupid butt face, and I hate it. Please die. <laughs> when bosses die, they erase their bullets, not other bullets, though. Oh, crap. This does not look good for Homestar Runner. Ow. I'm going to be ending it at the end of this stage unit thingy. Oh, and if you're doing really bad, you don't actually get to play all of the game, actually. Like, um, certain parts of areas just... They just end early if you're doing really poorly. So, it's... Another part of the dynamic difficulty, like, if you really suck, you just won't get to the really hard parts. Uh-oh. So... Crap. As far as I made it through there. I mean, I knew I could do that. I probably should have practiced this first. This is not a game you should be, you know. Look at that! This is supposed to be way more lethal. I'm embarrassed for myself right now. It's Kindergartner material. This is easy moto. Oh, we don't even get to fight that guy because we're such nubs. I don't actually know how the... When you, when you get a time increase, you get something called an altar break. I don't know, I don't really know what that does. And this boss is a pain in the butt to fight, so I just spam bullets. What you're supposed to do is uh, connect six of the same color of cube, and then it does damage, extra damage to the boss. But I don't really care. Because I'm a rebel. I think this boss gets healed if you hit her cubes, so don't hit her cubes. Ow. Also, I don't get it by her lasers, but... Oh, and she splits in half in this version. She doesn't do that in the PlayStation Network version. She comes back as a ghost, and you have to be in phase shift to hurt her now, which really, 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 really sucks, because it's... You don't get much magic. Though, I think friction also gives you magic, so... You can dodge her bullets and get magicness. And killing her is really friggin' hard. And uh, Platinate Despotif, the developer, really likes to make his bullet hell games hinge around you need to be near the bullets and sometimes near the bosses to do well. So, lots of risk reward crap going on there. So often you'll want to be near the boss, but uh, with some exceptions, like the parts where you die, those are not, those are not fun parts. Alright, we're going to cut the video.